Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today, we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 314. When I went to the garden one afternoon, my guardian angel said to me, Pray for the dying. And so I began at once to pray the rosary with the gardeners for the dying. After the rosary, we said various prayers for the dying. After the prayers, the wards began to chat gaily among themselves. In spite of the noise they were making, I heard these words in my soul, Pray for me. But as I could not understand these words very well, I moved a few steps away from the wards, trying to think who it could be who was asking me to pray. Then I heard the words, I am sister. This sister was in Warsaw, while I was was at the time in Vilnius. Pray for me until I tell you to stop. I am dying. Immediately I began to pray fervently for her, addressing myself to the expiring heart of Jesus. She gave me no respite, and I kept praying from three o'clock until five. At five I heard the words, Thank you and I understood that she had died. But during Holy Mass, on the following day, I continued to pray fervently for her soul. In the afternoon, a postcard came saying that Sister had died at such and such a time. I understood that it was at the same hour when she had said to me, Pray for me. Mother of God, your soul was plunged into a sea of bitterness, Look upon your child and teach her to suffer and to love while suffering. Fortify my soul that pain will not break it. Mother of Grace, teach me to live by the power of God. Once the Mother of God came to visit me. She was sad. Her eyes were cast down. She made it clear that she wanted to say something, and yet, on the other hand, it was as if she did not want to speak to me about it. When I understood this, I began to beg the Mother of God to tell me and to look at me. Just then Mary looked at me with a warm smile and said, You are going to experience certain sufferings because of an illness and the doctors. You will also suffer much because of the image, but do not be afraid of anything. The next day I fell ill and suffered a great deal, just as the Mother of God had told me. But my soul was ready for the sufferings. Suffering is a constant companion of my life. O my God, my only hope, I have placed all my trust in you, and I know I shall not be disappointed. I often feel God's presence after Holy Communion in a special and tangible way. I know God is in my heart, and the fact that I feel him in my heart does not interfere with my duties. Even when I am dealing with very important matters which require attention, I do not lose the presence of God in my soul, and I am closely united with him. With him I go to work. With him I go for recreation. With him I suffer. With him I rejoice. I live in him and he in me. I am never alone because he is my constant companion. He is present to me at every moment. Our intimacy is very close, through a union of blood and of life. August 9, 1934. Night Adoration on Thursdays. I made my hour of adoration from 11 o'clock till midnight. I offered it for the conversion of hardened sinners especially for those who have lost hope in God's mercy. I was reflecting on how much God had suffered and on how great was the love he had shown for us and on the fact that we will not believe that God loves us, that we still do not believe that God loves us so much. O Jesus, who can understand this? What suffering it is for our Savior! How can he convince us of his love if even his death cannot convince us? I called upon the whole of heaven to join me in making amends to the Lord for the ingratitude of certain souls. In this section, we see more of the mystical gifts of St. Faustina, 
Her guardian angel asked her to pray for the dying one day, and so she prayed the rosary and other prayers with the lay people with whom she was working in the garden at the convent in Vilnius. And then St. Faustina heard the voice of a sister in her soul who was uh, on her deathbed in Warsaw asking for prayers. St. Faustina prayed for her for two hours, uh, praying to the heart of Jesus as he was dying on the cross. And then the sister thanked her at 5 p.m., just after she had died. And there was a sister in Warsaw who died at that time at 4.45 in the afternoon. St. Faustina prays to Mary, who had to suffer so much during her lifetime. And Mary then visited Faustina and prepared her for some physical sufferings that she would have to undergo and some other sufferings tied to the painting of the image of the Divine Mercy. But Faustina proclaimed that she was ready because her whole life is suffering. St. Faustina writes of feeling the presence of God in a special and tangible way in her heart and in herself after having received Holy Communion. She carried out her duties with Jesus and she became like a living tabernacle. Jesus is her constant companion. Uh, Jesus may not stay in each of us in the same way after communion, but none of us is ever alone. Jesus is always with us. On the Thursday of the month before the first Friday, the sisters in that convent would take turns throughout the night in adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. And on one particular occasion in August, St. Faustina had her turn from 11 till midnight. And she sought to make reparation for the conversion of hardened sinners and those that had lost hope. She so wants to convince us of God's goodness. Thank you.